Continuing with the drawing views that we were learning about during the previous video, link below, we're gonna go over what we can do with the views that were mentioned then but not fully explained, as well as aligned section views and how to break a drawing view. So let's recall the names that we listed then that weren't fully detailed. We mentioned full section, half section, offset section, broken out section, and auxiliary section views. The full section view is what we covered in detail in the previous video. On a specific plane, we grab a knife and we keep only one side chunk of the part we're creating the section view for. We can do this for both the 3D model or the part drawings. The second one from this list is the half section view. We use this section view style when we want to cut only a fraction of the part to show what's inside. And I'll use the 3D model first so that we understand what we're achieving here and then we'll go into the drawings and see how we add a half section view there. If we grab the part that we used during the revolve and pattern video, link below, we can go over both the full and half section view. Let's paint the outer surfaces of the disc with a green color so that we can differentiate the outside from the inside of the part. A full section view example would be to come with a knife and cut this part in half. What we would see in a drawing of this section view would be a perpendicular camera angle where the blue surfaces are presented as surfaces with a hatch texture. But again, we already knew that. A half section view would be for example to cut only half of that part with that imaginary knife. We take our imaginary knife right through the middle of the part, but not cutting it through to the other side, only up to the center, and we remove everything that is on one side of the knife. The view that would be perpendicular to the surface that was in contact with the knife during the cut would be what we call the half section view. In a half section view, we see a regular orthogonal view for half of the part and the cut for the other half. To do this within the drawing, we use the make drawing from part option, place a right view of the part so that we can see the disc properly and we go into section view. On the left we see a half section option. We click on that and we get all the options explained as segments and arrows. So if we want to have the exact same view we just created by cutting the disc with the knife, we would want the first option. And notice here that the cut itself doesn't need to be exactly half even though that's the name. We can just click on any point here as we move our cursor. However, let's just finish this with what we had earlier. We see the cross-hatched surfaces that came into contact with the knife, the section view upper section, and the bottom which is equivalent to what a regular non-sectional front view would give us. To make it even more obvious, let's add a full section view, and also add a regular front view next to what we have to see how this half section view is just a combination of both, the top being the section view and the bottom being the front view. Cool, right? Alright, now for the offset section view, let's use a simple example geometry. Let's say we want to have a section view so that the two types of holes are fully described in it. There's not much we can do with the straight knife to get both holes through the middle. In this case, we want to cut one hole from one side and the other hole from the other side. From the 3D model, just to more clearly see what we're gonna do in the drawings in a minute, we would remove material starting from the front until we reach the center of the hole on the left. Then we would do the same for the section on the right until we reach the center of that hole on the right. The offset section view is there for the view that is perpendicular to the surfaces that were cut except that those two surfaces, or more than two surfaces, do not belong in the same plane. To do this in the drawing view, we use make drawing from part, in this case we use the top view and we go into section view once again. From this view, we want section segments that are horizontal, so that our section view is perpendicular to that and therefore equivalent to a front view. And after selecting where one of the two offset segments is gonna go, in this case the center of the hole on the left, instead of clicking the green check mark, we select the second option that reads single offset. This will allow us to select the breaking point along that line, so in this case anywhere on the right of the hole, to then select where the other segment is located, in this case again, the center of the second hole. And now we click on the green check mark and situate this offset section view. Done. Now you'd think that there would be a segment here, but in reality, since what we're seeing from the bottom is these two surfaces and what we see on the left and on the right of the break is exactly the same, there should in fact not be any segment there. Broken out section views have limited applications, so we're not gonna cover why you would want something like this yet, 
but just so you know how to create these and what they look like, we'll use the same geometry. Looking at the isometric view, we can click on the broken out section option and what this will ask from us is a sketch created by splines. This sketch is the shape of the tool that is going to remove material out of our view. We create a random shape sketch near the corner of our part, we click on preview and we increase the distance. What this is doing is increasing the depth of where our section view framed by our sketch is going to be located. So notice that at some point, when we go deep enough, we see the shape of our frame. But again, more on this in a later video. The auxiliary section view, just like the name suggests, is a combination of the two. That is, a section view that is not parallel to any of the orthogonal planes, meaning a slanted section view. Let's say we want a section view parallel to the slanted surface of the part we used in the previous video. We can make a drawing out of our part, use the front view, and before going into section view, we'll draw a line that describes the plane where we want our section view to be. And worth pointing out here is that we need an actual line, not a construction slash center line. SolidWorks won't like that. Let's say we want to pass through the edge at the top, we draw a random line that extends beyond where the part ends, and add a relation for it to be parallel to the slanted surface. And now we can go into section view. And what's cool is that if we select the line before clicking on section view, SolidWorks will immediately understand what we're trying to obtain. Alright, almost done. Two more to go. The aligned section view is helpful when none of these other views are. Let's look at this part right here. Since a straight section view would show us no useful information on the bottom, and because of the nature of the circular patterns, an offset section view would not be helpful either, what we can do is create an aligned section view. For this one, I think it's better if we start with the actual view and then explain what it did. To get an aligned section view, we make a drawing, bring in the front view, and then select section view. Within its options and like I promised in the previous video, the fourth option is what we choose to create the aligned view. The first thing we locate is the center or breaking point, in this case the center, and then the two lines, which can be created at any angle. In this case I will choose a vertical segment at the top and then a diagonal one that passes through the center of one of the five holes. Now what we obtained here is one single view with two distinct sections. The top part is a perpendicular view to the line above the breaking point and the bottom part is also a perpendicular view to the diagonal line below. Only they are both combined into one single view and this is what we call an aligned view. And finally, when a part is too long, like this mountain bracket we have here, it would be kind of silly to have a very tiny drawing using a low scale ratio with almost no information around the middle. Let's see what I mean. If we go into a drawing for this part and bring in the front, top and side views, notice how much space is being misused with no information around the center of the part. To be able to focus on the portions of the part that actually have information on them, like the holes and fillets, we can use the break view option. We click on a view that we want to break, we click on the break view button, and we get some wiggly lines to select the location of where we want to break our drawing. We choose two locations that are going to get rid of a section that has no dimensions information, and the drawing automatically updates without the cutout section. This allows us to increase the scale value to make the drawing larger, and we can still dimension lengths from one side of the drawing to the other, for example the distance between holes. And that distance will also indicate that the length is that of a break view. One last bonus tip before we go. The detail view allows you to draw a circle and to act as a magnifying glass. If a drawing is ever too small to show something that you would like to add more detail to, you can use this circle to create a detailed view. You can change the scale of the detailed view, move the circle, and even resize it so that you can add whatever dimensions you want the extra detail on. Alright, that will be it for today. Make sure to check out the links down below for both the other lectures of the SolidWorks course and also the playlists to the other engineering courses. Thanks for watching.